I think we both agree then they've both got their faults. I mean, this Vauxhall is a bit slow and that's a bit plasticky inside. It, it is, and I have to agree with you, it is not the most handsome of devils, that's for sure. However, money talks, and this is £4,000 cheaper than that, so I think this has got to be the winner. Yeah, I do agree with you. So, in fact, the cheapest cabriolet in Britain is the car that we can recommend. Here, here. Right, let's move on. When you think of Toyota in the modern world, you think of tiny little Igos bouncing around town, being all fun and frisky, or a, you know, a stationary Prius running on its electric motor and making friends with daisies and whales. There's one car that's going to put a dirty great boot through that image. Here comes the Land Cruiser. It's 50-odd years old, and Toyota boasts Land Cruisers have driven on more roads and tracks than any other 4x4 in history. If you're after an independent endorsement, then look no further than the United Nations. In the last five years alone, they've bought 12,000 of the things. That's six Land Cruisers a day, every day. And the attraction is clear. When you're driving through Sniper Alley, you don't want to be in something that has a tendency to break down. Nothing stops a Land Cruiser. Not even bullets. This is the new one. And it's fighting a war on two particularly tricky fronts. First up, it's got to be rugged and tough enough to make sure that those doctors can still get to refugee camps on time. And secondly, it's got to be a leather-lined luxury vehicle that can command a £56,000 price tag. Think of it like, I, I don't know, like wearing a diamond ring underneath a boxing glove. <laughs> Outside, it doesn't look very different compared to the old Land Cruiser. But then, Kofi Annan never bought one based on looks. It's a bit chromier, and there's now a softer front bumper, which is there to lessen the blow if you accidentally collide with a child on the way to peacekeeping duties. And the pluses don't stop there. The engine is new. It's a 4.5-litre V8 twin-turbo diesel, and it feels... Pretty damn brawny. It works really well with this six-speed automatic transmission. Mind you, 650 newton meters and 286 brake horsepower might well do that for you. It means that the Land Cruiser gets from 0 to 62 in 8.2 seconds and runs on to about 130 miles an hour. I know that's lots of numbers, so I'll break it down for you. This is lighter and quicker than the equivalent Range Rover, which is pretty useful to know when you're choosing a car to drive through a minefield. I need to talk to you about handling. There's a big feeling of scale and mass, but not poise or control or pretty much stability. I feel like I'm in one of those hamster balls that's just been kicked down the stairs. It's a bit all over the place. Look, watch this. Go up to this corner, turn in, and we just lean over. Oh, crikey. I know it's not supposed to outsprint a Lotus Elise, but I'd rather not go round the corner, write a letter to the front wheels, and then be put on a waiting list before they do anything. <laughs> It does, however, feel utterly impregnable. Every panel feels like it could outlive a cockroach in a nuclear blast. See? It doesn't even care. I'm not sure it's even noticed, actually. No, not a thing. Thing is, the UN like to keep these for at least five years, but I reckon you could get a Land Cruiser, give it a bit of a wash, sell it as nearly new. Inside, there are seven seats, and with a bit of a shuffle, watch this, you can actually get an adult in the back. Hmm. I'm not quite so keen on the tasteful wood, harvested from special Japanese trees, though, and it doesn't wrap around you like the ultra-cool womb of a Range Rover, but there's a very good reason for that. It is, at its core, a car designed for the world's harshest conditions. That's why you've got things like these buttons on the steering wheel that are designed to be used with gloves on. It's got knee pads down here to protect you when you're banging around off-road. Even the seats don't hug your shoulders too much so that you can get busy with the steering. This is a car designed for adventure. You're never really worried about banging into things when you're driving off-road because, basically, you know that, that chassis is made of girders. There's also some very clever stuff going on underneath. 
computers monitor whether you're on mud or dirt or sand and adjust the ABS accordingly, so it always keeps traction. There's also adaptive variable suspension, which basically tries to keep the wheels and tyres in contact with the earth as much as possible. It's all there to keep you moving. This car is not one that wants you to get stuck. As a car for use on the road, I'm afraid the Range Rover driving experience is much better. But if the UN are after another load of leather-lined tanks, I can think of nothing better than a Land Cruiser V8. But Tom, a Range Rover though, it can go over steeper hills because it's got better ramp angles so you don't scrape the bumpers. Yeah, I mean you could say that the UN should be touring around in Range Rovers, but to be honest, if I had to put my money on a car that had to do 300,000 miles across deserts, swamps, you know, across mountains and never miss a beat, I'm afraid my money would be on the Land Cruiser every single time. Sorry, that's just the way it is.